What's up guys, welcome to another video and I feel like I'm smashing out loads of content at the moment on my allotment plot. I'm absolutely loving making the YouTube videos and so much I want to get done on the plot at the moment. I've got a really, really special treat because it was, I say me, it was Sarah's idea actually. She said, well why don't you get yourself another polytunnel? And I was like, well okay then. So I went and ordered a polytunnel from Amazon. Don't know how quick it's going to take me to put this polytunnel up. I'm not in a huge rush, but I would like to get it done as soon as possible. The next few days, it doesn't look like there's any wind, so and it's going to be dry as well. So it's a good opportunity to get this polytunnel done. Although this video may spread over the course of two or three days. Um, but yeah, I've got the box of the polytunnel down there. Let me show you where I plan to put the polytunnel. Just here where these fruit trees are. So it's going to go in this area here. I've measured out the space and the space by width is three metres. So the polytunnel's three metres. The length up there is about five or six metres on this bed, but the polytunnel is four metres. So it's going to sit very nicely in this spot. Take a look at it from this angle. And you can see from the back of the allotment plot, the view of where it's going to be. Like I say, that's about six metres, I think. The polytunnel's going to be about four metres, but it's going to come a little bit off here. Like I say, the polytunnel was £109, so it's not like a, a premium type of polytunnel by any means. It's got a green cover. It's probably a little bit similar to what I had on my previous allotment plot over there. So I have put one of these up before. They definitely do need a bit of strengthening um, just to make sure they're all secure and they don't end up being a kite and blow away. But let's not worry about that now. I think first things first, if I can get the metal frame put together for the polytunnel, then I can worry about fixing it down afterwards. This is the box that the polytunnel come in. It's quite a small box actually. It's not even very heavy. But let's open it up and see what it looks like. Here we go. So looking at this, you've got the green cover there. A bunch of arc shaped holes and, oh no, they're Allen keys. I thought they might be screws so I could put them together quicker with my drill, but they can't, but that's okay. Take a look at the instructions. We've got E-tap, one, two, three, four, and five. So there's only five steps to put this together. So it all looks fairly straightforward. What I'll do is I'll get the poles out and we'll try and position them how they should be. It's time to build a polytunnel. Let's go! So I've come back the following day and I've finished putting up the frame and I'll tell you what, I'm glad that I didn't actually record most of that because I got in a right stinking mood, I'm not going to lie. They're giving you this poxy little allen key and some little nuts and a bloody spanner that's a waste of time so i had to go home and get some more gear to try and make life easier but check it out take a look before i put the cover on so there we go we got the frame up and running do you know what it fits absolutely golden in this space here i haven't dug up the fruit trees i've just left them as is at the moment because i'm not entirely sure if i'm going to dig all of them up i might leave some of them in the polytunnel just quickly show you the back here i've dug down deep there where the pole goes on the ground there i'm going to fill that up with a bit of concrete but I made the mistake last time of trying to dig it down, securing it all, and then I put the cover on, and I couldn't take the cover up, so I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna get the cover on, make sure it zips up. <laughs> that was the right job and a half doing that. But I managed to do it on my own. Cap had to come off, because I've been sweating, sweating buckets, but take a look. Look at this. <laughs> It's a nice little walkway I've got here and then look I've got some space here where I might put a couple of chairs and then we'll just take you inside quickly. Oh look at 
this. Oh my God. It is boiling hot in here. I've still got that beautiful fruit tree in there that I'm so seriously tempted just to leave in there. But yeah, look at this. Oh, it looks amazing. I fed it through under the bottom frame to begin with. I haven't done any more than that at the moment. I'm probably gonna stop and have some lunch first, but this just looks stunning. Well, after some serious hard graft over the past two days, I woke up this morning and I'll tell you what, this polytunnel build has kind of taken it out of me. Woke up with all sorts of aches and pains, felt like a right old man, but let me tell you something. A momentous moment, I tell you, I'm not gonna lie. I'm chuffed a bit, um, I don't really know what to say, but other than, well, I finished it and it is actually ready now to start putting things in to start growing. So I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll give you a little tour of my new polytunnel from the entrance of the allotment all the way down. So without further ado, let's dig in, if you pardon the pun. It's interesting because from afar or even a near, she looks a little bit like some sort of water bunker or something like that, which I tell you what, given the way the world's going at the moment, she might come in useful. Let's get a little bit closer and I'll show you what I've done to make her nice and sturdy. I've dug all this into the ground and I've fixed this plank of wood um, to an upright that I've put inside the polytunnel and I've screwed a little bit of wood to the outside to stop this flapping around too much. But yeah, it sits nicely in the ground. Entrance to the polytunnel, I think is gonna become a little seating area during the summer. I could pop the therapy chair there and I could put a little table and have a mug of tea or something like that. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this whole entrance area. Take a quick look before we go inside. That's what it looks like from the outside there. Um, yeah, there's a nice bit of space here and you may wonder what this plank of wood is. Well, I've put this down, fixed it down over the top of the buried pole that's in the bottom there. It just helps to sort of separate where the polytunnel goes from the outside area. Um, so as we step inside, I'm just literally going to just whip you up now so you can see it in all its glory. Oh my word! <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to dig out these fruit trees. I had to leave them in here. I did move a couple of them around so they're all in the middle, but I just couldn't bring myself to dig out this big tree. Look at that. It is starting to, to bud with something. If anybody does actually know what this is, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. I think it's going to pay off as well, leaving the fruit trees in here because as the summer comes and the fruit gets on it, the birds are just gonna try and get at the fruit and whip them away. I've got the fruit trees running all up the middle. Around all the edges, the bottom pole has been dug into the ground and I've put concrete all the way around it so it's not gonna move. I fixed a couple of planks of wood and sort of secured them by putting various screws in different places. So it just adds to the support of the polytunnel there's a little bit of a piece of wood there as well to support that but yeah i mean this is really dug into the ground nicely and then i put my trademark bits of wood up here which again i've sort of fixed in with screws in various different locations it just strengthens up these joists a little bit more i've got a big upright that goes from the floor down there all the way up to the ceiling and it's fixed up there and it's fixed on the bottom and it's also fixed to the operating table as well and we've got a big slab underneath there look you further around and i know you can't see but there's a huge amount of concrete underneath there that's supporting that corner and again i've put some wood down the bottom here just to support the bottom of the frame. Look at that though, it really is all ready to go now. It's blinking huge as well. The one thing I was toying around with and I couldn't make my mind up about was shall I create raised beds in here um, and have a line of compost and manure running up here, running up the far side and then maybe one big one running in the middle and I decided against it. I mean it's not something that 
I might do it in the future, but to tell you the truth, I've got no compost, I've got no spare soil, and I just don't want to spend any more money. Let's just get growing with what we've got now, because we've got loads and loads of space to get going now. Now I've got a polytunnel green ass and a flipping awesome allotment plotter. Well, £109 on the polytunnel. I'll put a link to the polytunnel in the description below. Um, and then I bought a bag of cement from B&Q, which was £9. So in total, oh no, and then I bought a bag of screws as well, just to screw some of those bits of wood together. So all in all, £125 it cost me to build this polytunnel, which is three metres wide and four metres long. And um, the wood chips I got from the allotment down the bottom there, um, that couple of bits of scrap wood I've sort of foraged from around and about. £125, tunnel of love. Can't wait to start growing in there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Do subscribe if you haven't done already because we've got more and more content. I mean, look at all the amount of growing spaces that I've got now. So, I mean, I just can't wait for the weather to get a smidgen warmer and things to start growing and harvesting. Thanks for watching. Just see you in the next one.